Okay, so King of the Hill is no stranger to dark episodes. Like that time Megalomart blew up and Luann's boyfriend Buckley was killed in the explosion. Or that time Bill had a nervous breakdown and started dressing and acting like his ex-wife, Lenore. Uh, Bill's busy. <clears throat> I needed a wrap. It's jelly. Oh, and how about that time Peggy's parachute didn't open? Don't worry, she lived, unfortunately. But in this video, we won't be talking about any of those. Oh, no, no. We'll be talking about an episode that was so dark, it was banned for three years. We'll be talking about... We're going to be taking a look back at this episode and talking about some of the mysteries surrounding it. Now, this episode was originally the Season 5 Halloween episode, but was immediately banned due to the dark, disturbing nature of the episode. However, it was released three years later in Season 7. But while you watch the video, remember that fans were hit with this episode randomly in January. Something about a dark Halloween episode being released a few weeks after Christmas makes it all the more dark. But without any further ado, let's jump into it. The episode starts with Peggy, Hank, and Bobby at Rattlesnake, a restaurant Luann Waitress is at. Peggy overhears the manager giving Luann attitude and decides she needs to butt in and quit on behalf of Luann, something Luann clearly did not want. Peggy claims she was showing Luann how to help herself and her quitting will leave her open for new opportunities. Peggy then goes to sign Luann up for a lecture called The Joy of Entrepreneuring without asking if Luann was even interested. It would be really nice if sometimes you could ask me when you make decisions about my life. You're right. Would you like to go at seven or at nine? Mm, seven. I'm sorry, that won't work for me. So in this short time, we learn Peggy has zero faith in Luann, making decisions for her, and feels she needs to control everything. Speaking at the lecture is Trip Larson, the man who inherited the Larson pork products. When he approaches the stand, he notices Luann sitting next to Peggy. After the lecture, he offers Luann a job at Larson Pork Products and schedules an interview at his house. Okay, fast forward and we're back at the Hills house where Hank finds Peggy and Luann celebrating the job opportunity, and Hank theorizes that Trip could be interested in something else. To put it bluntly, they're more interested in something else. Oh, you mean sex? Uh, no, no, no. Yes. Luann and Peggy arrive at Tripp's house for the interview, and Tripp invites Luann on his hot air balloon and tells Peggy to just go read his autobiography. While on the hot air balloon, Luann says to Tripp, You know so much, and I know so little. I hope that doesn't make you think I'm stupid. You are not stupid. You're ignorant. What? No, you can't tell- It's a compliment. That just means you haven't had the chance to learn all the wrong things. Oh. No one's ever told me that before. Well, maybe that's because no one has ever realized how ignorant you truly are. Yeah, Luann somehow takes that as a compliment because seconds later they're just smooching it up on this hot air balloon. Peggy and Luann drive home and Luann tells Hank that she is now Tripp's girlfriend. Hank obviously disapproves. Some time passes and while everyone is at dinner, we see Luann with braids. She says it's because Tripp likes them. Hank and Peggy meet with Tripp to discuss Luann. While Hank is impressed by Tripp's collection of the football bloopers and the propane powered hot air balloon, Peggy still isn't convinced. Tripp lets Hank have a ride in his hot air balloon and then threatens Peggy. Mrs. Hill, I'm a guy who makes his own rules. You play by them, everybody wins. Try to call your own game. Not so terrific. And later on at the dinner table, Peggy tells Hank what Tripp did, but Hank says Peggy must have just been distracting him, which is why the balloon shook. The doorbell goes off, and when Peggy opens the door, a headless pig is on the porch, addressed to Peggy. She takes it as a threat, while Hank takes it as a gift. Peggy goes to tell Luann that she needs to break up with Tripp, and Luann tells Peggy that she is a proud, ignorant woman, capable of making her own decisions. I am a proud, ignorant woman, and no one is going to change that! Now that is the stupidest thing I ever heard anyone say. <laughs> it then cuts to Tripp's house where you can see Luann crying on his shoulder. Luann says she's ready to go home, but Tripp took the liberty of bringing all of her belongings over to his house so Luann can live with him. They walk into her new room where Luann notices that none of her clothes are there. Tripp says they were shredded and opens the closet to reveal it's full of the same exact outfit. If you guys haven't noticed by now, this Tripp guy is, um, a little shady. Everything has a small flaw or imperfection. Drives me mad. 
That night, while Luann is sleeping, she's spooked by a noise and goes to check it out. She opens a door and a pig jumps out and attacks her. Trip hears the commotion and grabs the pig and tells Luann to go back to the bed and that he'll have someone bring her a glass of milk. He then says, finish it all. Super aggressive and Luann walks away scared. I'll have Blanca bring you up a warm glass of milk, okay? Okay. Finish it all. Luann wakes up and Trip says he took the liberty of dyeing her hair red while she was asleep for 14 hours. Now, this is just a theory, but I'm going to guess that he put something into that milk that he was demanding that she drink. And at this point, I don't see how anybody in their right mind is going to stay in this house with this dude. Obviously, he's insane. I would have been full sprinting through the door at this point, but Luann stays. And later that night, she steals the keys to Trip's private study and discovers a magazine in the display. And this is where things get really weird. Weird. She notices that the girl in the magazine bears an almost identical resemblance to her, and apparently Tripp was behind this chair all night. He shares his story about how the picture graced the walls of his nursery, and how his mother never paid any attention to him, but the picture of this woman was always there for him. Luann just says how alone she is, and then Tripp cheers her up by telling her about a big Halloween party they're going to be throwing. With a big Halloween party to show the world just how happy we are. Can I dress up as a pirate? A woman is a pirate? Well, that's just crazy. I know just what you wear. This. It cuts to Peggy and Hank being invited to the party, which they do attend, but minutes after showing up, the maid comes and tells Luann that Trip is ready for her now. When Luann finds Trip, he's dressed like a pig and then proposes to Luann, but instead of asking her to marry him, he's asking for her to marry the person dressed like the man in the Larson Pork Products magazine. Luann, will you do me the great honor of marrying him? Him? Javier, the time has come. <gasps> That's the man in the ad! Trip expresses his desire to be the family in the photo. Luann, the man, and then Trip as the pig. Trip starts snorting like a pig, and Luann runs away in terror. Trip chases after her, asking Peggy where Luann went off to. So now we have Peggy and Trip both trying to find Luann. Luann finds the slaughterhouse, and then Trip catches up. Luann jumps on a conveyor belt in order to get away from Trip, but then Trip jumps on the conveyor belt and grabs Luann. He then says this. This is now we can become Mars and Pork products together! Luann breaks free and gets off the conveyor belt. Trip stays on the belt, yelling at Peggy to pull the left lever. When she does, instead of the machine turning off, it activates a large impaling spike. Trip starts to laugh and says, Mama, Papa, I'm coming home. He then gets an electric shock. The shock has some effects on him too because he begins to regain his sanity. He questions why he's in a pig costume and then he notices the spike and lets out a, uh-oh, before this happens. Oh my god. I can suddenly think clearly. The voices have left my head. What am I doing in a pig costume? Uh oh. <laughs> yep, that just happened. Not only did they kill off Trip in this insane way, they made him regain his sanity before they did it. The episode ends with Peggy and Luann talking extremely calmly about the incident, calling Trip a sausage. Peggy says Luann is now her own woman, and Luann says, I guess it is a happy ending. And that's it. The episode just ends. And just so we're clear, I do blame Peggy for all of this. This episode was crazy dark, but you know it would be even more dark? If you could see Tripp's bloody, mutilated corpse hanging off a hook in the background while Peggy and Luann rejoiced over their victory. Well, the urban legend says that that was the original ending. Though we have no real evidence that this ending actually existed, tons of people claim they do remember it though. Oh, and listen to this clip of Hank talking to Luann. From the back, your head looks like a horse's ass. Doesn't it sound off when he says horse's ass? Almost like they recorded over something? Maybe something they had to change before it aired? A lot of mysteries in this episode. A lot of questions that will probably never be answered. But with that being said, that's going to do it for this video. But what about you? Do you believe the original ending had Tripp's bloody body hanging on a meat hook? I totally feel like I've seen that ending somewhere, but maybe it's just one of those times where you hear something over and over and you just start believing it. So if you remember this ending, let me know in the comments below and let me know how you feel about this episode. I for one thought it was, it was good, but it was very strange. I wouldn't say it's my favorite episode, but I wouldn't say it's my least favorite either. It's just one of those episodes that are just so different. It's just kind of in its own, its own league. How did you feel about this episode? Let me know in the comments. And I'm on my way to 100 subscribers, so it would mean the world to me if you would just click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Peace. Like a horse's ass.